فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us Our loved ones and the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam. Eid is a day of happiness and every single one of us is searching for happiness. Don't you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us two days of Eid in the year. The first day of happiness that truly we are meant to rejoice if you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you believe in the last day, you would have to rejoice and you would have to declare the praise of Allah, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on these beautiful days. The first one being after having engaged for an entire month in fasting, Allah says, it is your duty to have a day such that it is prohibited to fast. Subhanallah. Look at the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows that every human being shall be searching for happiness and searching for contentment. And this is why at that time, the Prophet وسلم, says to us, One who has fasted through the month of Ramadan will have two points of happiness. The first point is, when they have completed the prescription of fasting the entire month. You know, this narration also means that a person will have happiness at the end of every single day when they are opening the fast. But when the whole of Ramadan is over, they will have the first point of great happiness. That is a day of Eid. And then the same narration says the other point of happiness. What is it referring to? It is referring to the day that they meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will see the joy and the happiness of the ibadah and the acts of worship that I have taken or that I have participated in or engaged in for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will see the joy, the happiness, and I will achieve everlasting contentment. The same for every single one of us. May Allah accept from us the fasting that we engage during Ramadan. But very quickly after that, two months and ten days after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us another Eid. Do you know, Ramadan has the best nights of the year. But this month of Dhul Hijjah has the best days of the year. That is the difference. People say the day of Arafah, and indeed it is the best day of the year. But among the nights, the night known as Laylatul Qadr is the best night. So Ramadan is known for its nights. Yes, the days are also auspicious. These days, the 10 that we have just passed, they are known for the days. The nights are also auspicious, subhanAllah. My brothers and sisters, having participated or engaged in so many acts of worship in the last few days, having heard lecture upon lecture, reminder upon reminder to do good deeds because Allah loves good deeds the most during these 10 days, don't you think it is time that we declare a day of greatness, happiness and joy, subhanAllah. I want to be happy, but guess what? I may have, and the same applies to everyone else, we may have issues that sometimes make us sad. We might have lost a loved one. We might perhaps be struggling with our finances. We might perhaps be struggling in our marriages. In some instances, may Allah make it easy for us. We may be struggling with bad habits. And this is why we are reminded, if you would like happiness, there is only one way of doing it. 
If you want true joy on the day of Eid, there is only one way of achieving that true joy, the feeling within your heart that you know what? I am definitely a happy person. I am content. How is that? It is only and solely by turning to Allah, the one who gave you the day of happiness. Do you really want to taste the happiness of this day? If that is the case, you start off by seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, forgive my shortcomings. Oh Allah, forgive my sins. Forgive that which I've done in the past, that which I know, that which I don't know. Look at Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. These festivities, what we, are being, what we are going through and what we will be, inshallah, participating in, all connected to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. In a nutshell, what was his life all about? It was about obeying the instruction of Allah, turning to Allah. What did Allah give him in return? He was so happy, so content. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated his status that years later, not decades, centuries later, more than that perhaps, millenniums later, we're remembering him as fresh as ever. As though what happened just happened recently, subhanAllah. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, his son Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. Why is it so fresh? Why is it so beautiful for every one of us? We smile when we think of Ibrahim alayhi salam because he was obedient to Allah. That's the reason, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I am obedient, if you are obedient, don't you think we would actually get a little bit of what he got? Don't you think we would earn the pleasure of Allah, the owner of happiness, the owner of goodness, the one who has total control over the contentment that I'm searching for in this world and the next. Some people forget Allah, remove him from the equation. Allah may subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them a little bit in terms of this worldly material life. They may get it, but guess what might happen? They may lose the hereafter if they don't quickly realize that I need to turn back to Allah. And this is why those who were with us last year and are not with us this year because they passed on. It's important we remember them. May Allah give them Jannah to Firdaus. But it's not enough to just make dua for them. What is of greater importance, Wallahi, is for you and I to remember that next year I may not be here. That is of greater importance. What is of greater importance when a person passes away is for us to take heed to learn lesson for ourselves. I need to ask myself, what did I learn? Can I say something that every single person here will relate to? Look at how quickly time is going by. A few years ago, we were young, we were at school. After that, subhanAllah, we had our friends and so many things happened in our lives. A lot of us got married, mashallah. Most of us have children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those with children, make them the coolness of their eyes and those who don't have children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you offspring who will be the coolness of your eyes. But look at how 20, 30, 40, 50 years have gone by. We used to call others the old man. Now they are calling us the old man, subhanallah. But we've never realized where are we going? We're heading towards Allah. There is no other way, no other channel, no other road besides towards Allah. So it's about time we change. It's about time we did good deeds. And Allah says, I am not going to punish you. I am going to give you instructions not to punish you, but to facilitate your living in this world, as well as your living in the grave, which is the Time between this life and the next, subhanAllah, after the day of judgment, between death and the day of judgment, subhanAllah, you're going to be in the grave. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these rules, these regulations will ensure that you are content on earth. You are happy. There will be a lot of rules, a lot of regulations. You follow them, you will be happy. Wherever you have faltered, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn back to Allah. You know what amazes me is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Ibrahim alayhi salam to announce the Hajj. Who was there? There was nobody. To be honest, there was nobody. 
There were two people who had accepted faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, announce the Hajj. And there were a few people, subhanAllah, who heard this. Yes, more and more turned to Islam later. But when Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam passed away, there were very few people who had accepted Islam. He announced it because he followed the instruction of Allah. The minute he knew that this instruction is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, the result is irrelevant. What I need to do is to do what Allah has instructed me. Let's all try to do the same. Allah instructed Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam to do things that did not make sense to a mind or a heart that did not have faith. But if it had faith, it made a lot of sense. This, came, this comes from Allah. My happiness and my contentment after seeking the forgiveness of Allah lies in my salah. That's what it lies in. It lies in me ensuring that I fulfill my five prayers a day, not as a chore, but as an honor. I feel I want to do this. It is a pleasure. I take my time when I fulfill salah. You will notice the beauty. You will feel the serenity. You will feel the comfort. You will feel every good feeling because you know that you have actually obeyed Allah's instruction. And it's not enough to just pray the five prayers and give charities to the poor, reach out to others. That's not enough without ensuring our character and conduct reflects the obedience of Allah. And what this means, and this is something very powerful that many of us take for granted. Piety and closeness to Allah shows up very clearly in your character. It softens you. It makes you a better person. It makes you beautiful. It makes you have better thoughts about others. That is a sign that you are close to Allah. If you are fulfilling your salah five times a day and you are as charitable as ever and you've been for Hajj so many times and for example, you might have fasted not only in Ramadan but even outside Ramadan voluntarily but your character and conduct happens to be hard, harsh. You happen to look at people with a very, very tough eye if I can word it that way or your character towards others is something unacceptable you need to know there is something wrong with you and your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you need to rectify it you need to go back these are creatures of Allah the same way he made me he made the creatures of Allah the same way I may have a few issues within myself every single person has the issues never judge a person and this is why I always say my beloved brothers and sisters something amazing is we will never understand what others are going through until and unless we have gone through the same. You know, if a person loses a child, for example, may Allah make it easy. It's easy for you and I to go to them and to tell them, you know what? Have patience, bear patience. Allah is great. Allah will reward you. Allah will do this for you and that for you. But you as a person whom that has not happened to will never ever understand exactly what that person has gone through. So keep on showing it in your character and conduct. Reach out to them in whatever way without judging. Sometimes statements they may utter, things they may do, guide them and keep on guiding them because I tell you, tests have happened to others that may not have happened to us. We will never understand what they've gone through. I've given you an example of a person losing, for example, a loved one. The same can be said for a person who might have lost something materially after being wealthy, you know, the from riches to rag stories, it has an effect, an impact on a person such that if it, you have not been through it, you may not understand it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us humble and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us obey the instruction that he has laid down in a similar way that Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam obeyed. You take a look at the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They obeyed in a similar way. When alcohol was prohibited, for example, they said, intahayna, intahayna. We have stopped. We have stopped immediately. They dropped it. They, they threw it out. As a result, they achieved the pleasure of Allah. When we say their names, what do we have to say with that name in order to give them the status Allah has given them? When I say Abu Bakr, I cannot just say his name like that. Astaghfirullah. I need to add together with it, radiyallahu anhu. May Allah be pleased with him. Why do I have to say that? If I don't, it's an insult. When I say Umar, no matter what happened prior to his tawbah and accepting of Islam, 
We are looking at the status Allah gave him after he changed his life. Look at that. We have to say radiyallahu an to him and to all of them because they obeyed the command of Allah. Don't you think if I obey the command of Allah, if you obey the instruction of Allah in that way, the angels will be saying, may Allah be pleased with this person. They will. It is in the Quran. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah speaks about how the angels declare His greatness and they seek forgiveness for those on earth. Those who are seeking forgiveness, the angels are telling Allah, Oh Allah, forgive this person, He's asking for forgiveness. فَأُفِرْ لِلَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَاتَّبَعُوا سَبِيلَكِ The angels are saying, Oh Allah, forgive those who are seeking forgiveness and who are trying to follow your path. Forgive them. Imagine the angels saying something about you and I. May Allah forgive our sins. May Allah have mercy on us. May Allah grant us contentment. So I started off by saying, if you want contentment, you seek the happiness or you seek, sorry, you seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah becomes pleased with you. You fulfill your prayers, your obligations unto Allah, so that Allah becomes pleased with you. And so that your connection with Allah is exactly as per the connection of those predecessors of ours who were pious, subhanAllah. When Allah instructed, they immediately, they immediately fulfilled. So now I've sought the forgiveness of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am also fulfilling my obligations unto my maker. One more thing, and I've already spoken about it. Fulfill your obligations unto the rest of the creatures of the same maker. If you can understand, when Allah creates people around you, He creates them for a reason. They are part and parcel of your test. He knows who He was going to make your neighbor, someone in your community, your society, your spouse, your parents, your children. Every one of them was chosen by Allah for you and your examination, your test. It's not a mistake. So when they do bad to you, it's because Allah is testing you. That's your examination question. You need to pass the test. If it is really bad, you might want to walk away in an honorable way. You don't walk away swearing so that you also dropped what those who have dropped or those who were low. No. If someone is so low that there is no goodness in them, the minimum a believer does is he says peace and he walks on. Subhanallah. But that was a test for you. When Allah did something to you, it was yours, tailor-made for you. And this is why Allah says, when we made you, we did not just make you, we made with you an entire creation. Things you will know and certain things you won't even know, subhanAllah. So this is the, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was His plan. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, let's develop our character, our conduct. Wallahi, it's a day of Eid. Improve the way you speak to others. Improve your thoughts. The way you feel towards others, start having good feelings, subhanAllah. It will make you a happier person. Learn to release. You want the forgiveness of Allah? Forgive others. Open your heart, open your mind, and you will see what will happen. The day of Eid will become so beautiful. Brothers amongst us, I'm talking of blood brothers amongst us. We don't speak to each other for years on end because we've had a misunderstanding. I'm sure we can resolve that. It's a day of happiness. Pick up the phone, no matter where they are on the globe. Be the bigger one, subhanAllah. You rise above it, phone, and tell them, you know what, it's a day of Eid. We've just heard a beautiful reminder. And if we like happiness, we need to seek forgiveness and learn to forgive. I was wrong. Forgive me. Be the bigger one, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Some might be saying it's easier said than done. I do agree. And that's why you get such a great reward. Because obviously for me to say it is one thing, but to execute it, sometimes a person is owed $2,000, for example, by someone else. And then they'll call you and say, did you hear the talk this morning? Yes, I did. Well, are you going to forgive me? I've forgiven you, my brother, but you still need to give me the 2000 MashaAllah, tabarakallah. It's not a matter of giving up your rights. If there is a right, you are owed it, subhanAllah. You have every right to ask for it. You have every right to demand it in a beautiful way, but you do not have the right to become ugly as a result of someone owing you something or someone having oppressed you.
When a person swears you, if you would like happiness on a day like this, guess what you should be doing? Let's go back to Ramadan and look at the hadith. The Prophet says, when you are fasting, someone swears you, If someone swears the person who is fasting, the hadith says he should just say, look, I'm fasting. You don't swear back in return because you know you're going to spoil your fast. The same applies. Your contentment, your happiness will be spoiled when you become low with those who are already low. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So today, I'm going to take it upon myself and I'm calling upon every one of you to think about and execute an improvement in the way we speak to people, our family members, say beautiful words, make them happy. Do you know idkhalu sururi fi qalbi al-mu'min? To actually instill happiness in the heart of a believer is such a great act of worship that I sometimes sit and think, what about if it was my own family members? Subhanallah. Because charity begins at home. That rule applies in Islam as well. The hadith speaks about it. You want goodness, start at home. And then you, the circle becomes wider. But if you were not to begin at home, what do you expect? So let's go home. Let's say the most beautiful words. And let's say words in a way that we mean them. You know, you get to someone, Ibn Barak, they look at you, Ibn Barak, Ibn Barak, hey brother, Ibn Barak, breaking a smile, you know. There's a way of saying things, subhanAllah. You will get a reward for having smiled. That smile will make someone else smile, so you get a reward for the smile of the other person too. And you know what? It goes on and on and on. Who gets the reward? Every one of us. It's amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So, I wanted to spend these moments on this beautiful occasion reminding us to develop our link with Allah and our link with the rest of the creatures of Allah should be correct if we'd like to achieve the happiness of this day, truly. It's a day that we would be engaging in an act of worship that is extra. Every time there is a day of happiness, there's something extra. We're about to fulfill the Salah of Eid and at the same time, we are all going to inshallah either sacrifice an animal or for those who cannot afford it or those whom it's not compulsory upon they will at least get the feeling of it by receiving something eating something seeing something subhanallah what is it all about it is all about ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam when he was instructed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do something it did not make sense to him it did not and it cannot make sense to anyone for someone to give them an instruction to sacrifice their son it doesn't make sense to anyone but to ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam the fact that it was confirmed that the instruction came from allah that is what mattered so when he went to fulfill it allah says subhanallah you have passed your test o ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Indeed, you have made the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come true, which means you have fulfilled it. The instruction that came to you through the dream, you definitely fulfilled it. And this is the way we will recompense those who do good. Why does Allah say this is the way we will re recompense those who do good? Because that instruction goes all the way down to every one of us. My brothers and sisters, when Allah instructed us, He did not say sacrifice your son. If that was the case, perhaps people would be debating. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. All He is saying, become a better person. Become a person who fulfills his obligations unto Allah. Become a person who solves problems rather than create problems. Become a person who is a role model rather than a person who follows those who perhaps might lead him astray. Our role model is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our role models are the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Those are the men we'd like to be like. We may never be exactly like them. But do you know if you aim for the sky, at least you get to the clouds by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my beloved brothers and sisters, what a beautiful day. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from every one of us 
the acts of worship we may have engaged in the last few days. That which we will engage in today and that which we will be engaging in the last in the next few days. I remind you of a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding this beautiful season. He says, Ayyamu tashriqi, ayyamu aklin wa shurbin wa dhikrin lillahi ta'ala. Never has Islam promoted food. Do you know that? This religion has never promoted and given importance to food. Except in these days. In what way? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, the days of tashriq, and those are the days that we actually read the takbirat in. The days of tashriq are days of eating, drinking, and remembering Allah. The difference between a believer and a non-believer is that a believer will eat and drink and remember Allah. A non-believer will eat and drink and forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is Allah telling us very clearly, telling us subhanAllah, that you know what? You eat, you drink, and remember Allah. So my brothers and sisters, I'm telling you the same. Let's eat and drink, but let's remember Allah. When we, before we put the food in our mouth, we need to remember Allah. And after putting the food in our mouth, we need to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are hungry, we remember Allah very easily. But when we are full, those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones who have succeeded. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, subhanakallahum wa bihamdih, ashadu wa lahi.